Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Switching Stances. I'm one of your hosts, Tyler, joined by my good friend, my good buddy, Ollie, aka Gaz. How's it going, my friend? It's going well, man. It's going well. Um, we sort of missed our, our New Year's opportunity to do like awards and things. So I think I, we're just going to... I, gonna, I, gonna I, gonna I feel like we could still do a bit of awards. I still think we can do awards. Okay, awards. I've not thought of but, any awards, so I've just got to scramble for those. Oh, um, I would. Um, I've got. I think there's three, maybe four simple ones. I think we just do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. we can get into that. We can get into that. Just planning the podcast on the fly. Um, yeah, we've been it. a bit disorganized, guys. If you couldn't tell, but that's more because of how crazy New Year's Christmas period yeah, is, and just sort of finding of that time. Dude, my December was absolutely fucked with yeah. how busy it was. I had no free time. I was like burnt out heading into Christmas. I was completely burnt out physically um, and mentally, um, but did yeah. have a good break over that time and um, spent a lot of time away and with family and with my partner and friends and just, you know, all good, busy in, in good ways for the last like two weeks, I would say. Um, mm. but ready to get back into it, ready to get into 2024. Um, how are you doing? How's your Christmas and New Year's? Uh, I mean, I work in medical stuff without doxing myself completely. Um, yeah. so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so my, I mean, just the whole December period into early January was nuts because obviously we, we shut over Christmas. And so people came in with medical concerns, like, crazy in the new year so it's just been we've been swamped um yeah and therefore i've been swamped but actual yeah. christmas was nice um that was good yeah actual christmas was nice and quiet new year's went to see my girlfriend for a bit yep um had a couple of days there yeah yeah nothing yeah. nothing crazy to report really it was pretty pretty nice pretty chill that's lovely that's lovely love to hear it love love good wholesome time have you got some some targets, some goals, some things you're you're looking at in 2024. Uh, I want to read more. To be honest, I'd like to read yeah. a lot more because I used to love it, and I've just not had, I've not given the time to it. I don't want to say I've not had the time to it, for it. Yeah, but yeah. I've not given it the time that it needs really. So I'd like to try and read some more books. In terms of martial arts, I've got something cooking up. That I've had cooking up for mm. quite a while, and it's mm. gone through like four different phases of what it yeah. is going to be, and I think I've sort of settled on what it's going to be now, and I've reached the end sort of of the writing process. I've got one yeah. more, one more section to write about technically, and then I can start putting it together as more than just a piece of writing. Can't wait. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I'm, yeah so, this is something fine. I obviously know about, and you've been you have been talking about it for a long time. So I, I'm very yeah. interested to see how you how you're going to do it. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited to get into it because it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and I've I've been seeing a lot of love as of late for the person it's about. Okay. Yep. Yep. That's exciting. Well, that's yeah. very exciting. Can't I can't wait. Um, and you probably know. Well, you do know me very well and you know that i've probably written out which i have a massive list of goals for the year and of then course, done yeah, like yeah. a month by month breakdown of all the things i need to do to achieve said goals um yeah, of course. at least that i know of so far um and i've got a shitload but um one that i want to tell you about this is not mma related was that i gave myself like a fun goal like a fun, easy goal. Oh, like yeah. last year I had like read 10 books, didn't read 10 books. I'm not a reader, but I'll tell you what I am. I'm a film guy and I haven't spent a lot of time the last two years yes. really watching many new movies yes. or like watching just exploring cinema. And that's one of my favorite just pastimes that are easy. So I wanted to give myself a very triple goal. So I, I was like, watch 25 classic films yes. that I've never seen before. And I wrote, uh, but instead of just being like, oh, I've just got to watch 25, how am I going to like, do I just have to keep a list going? I actually wrote the 25 movies that I want to watch this year okay. that I've never seen, that I've wanted to see for a long time, that have been on my like, I haven't seen that, I need to see it. Can you give me your um, top five? Mate, I'll run it through super quickly with you right okay. now if you'd like to. Yeah, uh, yeah, go, 12, for it, go for it. 12 Angry Men. Yep. 
1957 film. And I wrote all the dates next, like the years they released too. Um, Young Frankenstein from 74. Mm-hmm. Uh, Le Mepris, which is like Jean-Luc Godard's most famous film. Um, sure. Who's a f- French director. Um, I, I really enjoy when I get nerdy. If you want to ask me to get really nerdy about cinema, I'm, I love French films especially yeah. in that era. Um, I just think they, they made such incredible films. Jean-Luc Godard being like a really key, you know, one. Um, but the what spawned this on for me was I was watching Barbie, which I had not seen. Um, mm. Oh, and it's super a couple of days ago. isn't it? And dude, I loved it. And there was one yeah. point I sat there and I was like, oh, that's fucking, like there was obviously like, which is on the list I didn't know, but 2001, A Space Odyssey, I've never watched. I've never seen it. Oh, fuck you, man. Isn't this, yeah, do you know I know, dude? That's what I mean. There's going to be films in here you're going to be like, how the fuck have you not seen that title? Yeah. How? That but I, nice. but it's been on my list for so long. You know what I mean? Like, there's so yeah. many films to watch. Some films you just, like that. You know, you just I haven't seen it. There's, yeah. there, that's not going to be the worst one. But that's that's one on there. Um, there's what I know. The worst one's gonna kill you. It's um outrage. It's actually outrageous that I've never seen it. Um, but it had reference to Playtime, which is my favorite foreign like French film. Oh. Um, by Jacques Tati. So that's I didn't know and that. I was and I just said I turned to my girlfriend and to to my mate David. We we're watching and I was like, that's this is like referencing like. One of my favorite French films from the sixties. Like you had a they bit were of an like, MCU moment. I ha- and they were like, I did, but like in a film, in film connoisseur way. Yeah, yeah. And this is so not MMA, but this is hilarious. This is switching scenes, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is just too much to love MMA and also love movies. Um, and then just a couple of dorks, but it just made me want to go watch Playtime. But then I was like, oh, there's a bunch of Jacques Tati movies. That, oh, but then I, I wanted to look up an interview with Greta, the director, and I was oh, like, what films inspired it? I wanted to prove myself right. I'm like, surely that's playtime. It has to be out of playtime. And shots that were similar, even sets that were straight out of playtime. And mm. I was like, has to be. And then I watched like an interview and she went through all these movies that inspired. It was like 20, 21 movies, I think, that yeah, inspired it was something Barbie. Like that. And she goes, oh, of course, Jacques Satie playtime. I was like, yes, I fucking knew it. But then she said Mon Onk, which I'd, I've known about for ages and wanted to watch for ages, but not seen. My uncle is tra- um, is the translation for that, but I oh, haven't right. seen it. And it's one of his earlier ones from 58. Um, so I put that on the list and I've already watched that. And loved oh, nice. It. Um, I watched that like two days ago. So I'm one down, 24 to go, but that's where there's a couple of these French films. So I just wanted to point that out. That's what spawned this whole list. I was like, let's write down the list. I was actually watching fucking Barbie that spawned this idea. Oh, nice. But it was more, of, it was more Greta being a fucking amazing filmmaker that spawned this idea. Um, I've got Citizen Kane. Nice. I've, I've, Haven't I've seen, seen it seen myself, it. but I, yeah. it's a, yeah. Uh, okay. This is, I think, think probably the most egregious thing i've not seen there's a couple of pretty egregious ones mm-hmm. the shawshank redemption ah oh. yeah i mean i i really like it um i'm more of a 2001 fan but like the shawshank so yeah, okay like, i saw that when i was like i just 50. feel like yeah okay gone with the wind i've never seen but you know 1939 one of the highest grossing films yeah. i've never seen it so i'm like i just feel like i have to have seen gone with the wind um 2001 a space odyssey Really egregious one. Well, maybe not too egregious, but Blade Runner. Never seen the original. Blade oh, Runner. I was gonna ask at the end if you didn't if you didn't mention it. I was gonna mention Blade Runner. Yeah, Blade I Runner's on there. I fucking love Blade Runner, man. I yeah. I am. I've been trying to get James, um, who is your previous your ex co-host, my ex, uh, yeah, my ex girlfriend. For for those <laughs> that don't know, yeah, for all three of you, um. Yeah. Yeah, I've been trying to get James to watch it for like a month, which obviously means he's been less and less inclined to do it. Yes, but, that's sort of how it works with both James and myself. Yeah, with yeah. Recommendations. But I I rewatched it with my girlfriend recently because there's there's a few different cuts of it, which is odd. And one of the cuts was that like the the original theatrical screening has a really dodgy ending, where they yeah. like use some footage from The Shining and have like a voiceover. And really like water down what the film's saying, right? Which is okay. really odd. Um, so you're gonna have to make sure you get me onto the right one. 
Yeah, yeah, the final cut, I think, is the one that people sort of say is the best version. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's, like, it's only yeah. like 10 minutes longer. It's not at all. Okay. Yeah, it's not yeah. too bad. No. Um, I've also got Casablanca. Yep. Okay, this one's probably actually the most egregious because I've seen the first one. Have I not seen part two, which is the Godfather part two? Oh, uh, really? Yeah, I've just never, I never watched Fuck, it. And I, loved I, thought, it. I thought you would have. I've seen the I've first Godfather again. multiple yeah. times, but I not, I've not seen the the second one. I just never got around to watching part two. Yeah, I prefer um, the first, but the second is also fucking banging. See, I've ju- I've heard the second one's the best one. That's what everyone says, don't they? The second one's the best. I one. just I just am more attached to the idea of like the guy going from the, like a perfect moral citizen to this. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, to this like. What are they called? What are they called? Don. Yeah. Yeah. I, I find that Mob more compelling. Boss. And they sort of do that again somewhat in the part two. Because yeah. they have Robert And De then Nero. I've heard three is horrific. So I just sort of was... I've... Yeah. Three is very much... Yeah. Yeah. I haven't yeah, seen yeah. it. But I've heard bad okay. things. And I'm not going to touch it. Because I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to tarnish the memory. Okay. Okay. Um, I've also got on here because I want to have like an Australian film and there's a cult classic Australian film um, The Adventures of Priscilla Queen of the Desert oh uh, um, I've heard and about a how have I how, how have I never seen that as an Australian is absurd but I haven't The Good The Bad and The Ugly never seen it yeah want to see I've not it. seen been it yet the, been on my list for a long time I've been watching through the other two in the trilogy recently okay oh, I've been the, sort of you know what? myself up to it on an MMA podcast Mm. This is probably the most egregious thing I've never seen. You never I've seen... never seen Rocky. I was going to say, yeah, it's going to be Rocky. I've never I've seen Rocky, either. bro. I've not either. I've never seen any of the Rockies. Not, I've seen like clips from heaps of them. I could tell you, I know the characters' names. I know the villains' names. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know sort of which movie, what thing happened. You know, I do know Rocky because you hear about yeah. it so much, especially being in the MMA world, how much it's referenced. But I've not actually watched the whole film itself. Yeah, I've only I think I've only really seen it in like history class. And that was yeah. during the whole the whole Drago stuff. I think yeah. they showed yeah. us as a like a metaphor. Yeah. But I don't true. think I've actually seen well, I know I haven't seen the film. Yeah, which is wild. Wow. Yeah. Um Breakfast at Tiffany's. Mm-hmm. Love a chick flick, so I've got to throw some classics in there. I've never seen Memento because I, then I started getting into when I was looking up classic films. I was like, let's look up films from directors that I love and have seen most yeah. of their films. Let's pick one. Um, and that was pro- one from Nolan that I've just not seen. Um, Pretty in Pink. I don't even remember really what that... 1986, I don't really remember what that was on. But I was looking up a few lists at the end. Heavenly Creatures, which is one of Peter Jackson's earlier films. Mm-hmm. Um Gangs of New York, which is a Scorsese, is probably oh, the yeah. 2002, the latest, most recent film that is on this list. But I was looking through Scorsese films I've not seen, and that was really the only one, except for there was one other one that's super early that you were talking about on Twitter recently that I've not oh, seen, and it was between those was it two. His Was it the one, like his only film about a woman? Yes. Um, exactly fuck, I forgot what it's called now, but I really enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. Okay, well that that, that yeah, that's not on the list. I I, no. I picked Gangs of New York because DiCaprio and um um Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah. Uh, then seven Seven Samurai because on every great oh, yeah. all time list, that's on yeah. all of them. Um, and I'm just like, okay, let's let's throw it in there. And I um, it was good to have like an Asian cinema film. Yeah, in there I've not seen it, but list. I know of it. Yeah, um, Breathless, which is another Jean Luc Godard film I've not seen, I've wanted to see for a while. Singing in the Rain, yeah, um, got to be on there. La Dolce Vita. Uh, I know, I know the name. Uh, yeah, it's an Italian film from this from nineteen sixty. I've got mm-hmm. Annie Hall. Oh yeah, on there. Um, which I've just, I've never really ever watched. Um, um, what's the guy's name? And all his movies are about women. And um, is the, Woody Allen. Yeah, Woody, Allen. Pre- Woody yeah. Allen. That's the one. Um, I've ne- I don't know any Woody Allen movies I've seen. 
Um, I don't. He's no, just not someone I've ever I've watched. Any. So I was like, let's put a Woody Allen movie on there, and Annie Hall's obviously a very well known one. Um, and then I don't even remember putting this on the list, but it clearly must be good. It's like a French address, but it's a French movie from 1975. Um, G- Jeanne uh, Dillman, 23. Mm-hmm. I, d- I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's just, a, it's like, an, it looks like an address is what it looks like reading. Oh, oh, is it really long? Yeah, it's really long. Oh, fuck, dude, you're going to hate that. That's going to be funny. Will I? That's going to be so funny. Well, like... Will I hate it? I think it's meant... I think it's meant to be... Do you, do you want me to tell you anything about the film? Or do you want to just go into it? Let's go into it. Because it'll be quite funny if you just go into it. But it, you, might, me, you might be worth it. Let me put in know. brackets... Gaz wants a, opinion. So I remember to message you afterwards. I've not I, seen it, but I've heard it talked about on a podcast. And... I, my understanding of it yeah oh do i get do it yeah okay i will i will my yeah, understanding yeah, yeah. of it is that it's like five hours of like a woman doing chores around the house like, five hours yeah 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 and if i'm thinking of the right the same one um, let me have a look at it sounds like a french film to be fair yeah and like you watch it's, mononc it's just a, it's just about like a they're not a lot of those they're not about like they're not Hollywood shows it's not about a story line you know what I mean like a no, general Hollywood not, not plot beginning and end it's it's not conventionally like that you know what I mean like they and I'm not saying this movie's good and not shit like you're saying but I just mean some of the other ones I could see a lot of people not watching like I was telling my girlfriend about it and I was like I would never make you watch this you would hate it um, yeah oh yeah bec- you know because it's just you don't watch movies like this okay yeah it's three hours twenty minutes long Oh no! I'm thinking 90... of a different one. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of one that is so legitimately long. five hours. Oh, well, this is three hours twenty minutes, and it does look like a woman doing chores, bro. When I look at the what's images. it called? What's it called? Sorry. Let me let me let me let me send it to you. Go. On. Um, this is wild, and maybe you can try to pronounce it. We are almost twenty minutes into an MA podcast, and we are talking about classic cinema. Oh, it is that. You know yeah. You know what? I love it. I don't give a fuck. We're, this is staying in. This is who oh, we yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, this is what sure. switching stands is. You want to come here and just get MMA? Well, I'm sorry, I can't. Yeah, help you. <laughs> a lonely widowed wife does her daily chores. It's the first line of of Letterboxd. Um. Yes, it is totally that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, three hours and twenty minutes. Okay. Oh, I'm seeing some screenshots here. Wow. Okay. How do you pronounce? It? Do you want to give it a shot? No. Uh, yeah. Jean Jean Delman. 23. Quai de Commerce, 1080. Bruxelles? Bruxelles? Yeah. Good luck. Bruxelles? Probably, it's probably Bruxelles. If you just type in J E A N N E space D I E L M A N, the rest will come up. If you type in that, the rest will come up. Um, Yeah. I think it it is, it is more than a woman doing chores around the house, but like. Yeah. I I mean, it looks like, it looks like. Will be yeah, that, I think. Well, from the, just the images, a couple of just, and this is what you know, I love about French films is their shots, shot selection, and direction is so spot on that even just I go into images. If you Google image a movie, you can see a lot of different screenshots, and you're not going to really know what it's no. about. I can tell you, I think I have a pretty good idea of what this movie is about just from the way it's shot and these shots that are popping up. But it is because their concepts are sm- are very small, but they really mind them for their ideas and all that they can represent. They say a lot with so little in, in French yeah. cinema, I think. Um, whereas, you know, a Hollywood film, you need to have locations, explosions, characters, villains. Like, you've got to have so much to tell these stories. Um, whereas in French films, they have just a couple of simple locations. Um, can, and they do a lot with character work and with um, actions. Can I ask you to potentially add one more? What is it? Or will you flat out not do it? I will. I will. One has to be removed. It's twenty five. I'm not having. Okay. Which yeah, twenty? Yeah. I'm not having on my twenty twenty four goals list. Watch twenty six okay. classic films. Fuck I off. think. I think. How much Stanley Kubrick have you seen? 
Not a lot. No. Okay. Well, because you've got two thousand one on there. Yeah. Um, but like, have you seen like The Shining? Have you seen like? I've seen The Shining. Yeah, yeah. I've seen the okay. Shining. I'd say, yeah. I'd say as long as you have like at least that, I yeah, I think you fine. should watch. I think you should watch um, Eyes Wide Shut, because you're oh, a big Tom Cruise seen... guy. It's a big Tom. You're a big Tom Cruise guy, and it's. The I one am a big Tom Cruise guy. Oh, you're doing well. Sent him into sort of his action, his action role. Eyes Wide Shut. Is In it the, good? It's not. It's. I love it. Um. Someone came out. I'm gonna have to. Nicole Kidman. Someone Kidman. came out with a fucking great video. Essay something's getting the removed. Then someone. Something's really... getting removed. I'm gonna move pretty in pink. Yeah, that's fair. Oh. Empire of the Mind came out with a fucking incredible um, video essay on it because it's a very yeah, confusing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of pretty in pink. That's a good. Yeah, I feel like that's a good call. So eyes wide shut. 1999. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. it's Tom Cruise. It's Nicole Kidman, and they're married in the film. And it's a it's a sort of. <sighs> It's very mind bendy and dreamlike, and there's a really famous scene from it where Tom Cruise is walking down a street, but he's not walking down a street in how they filmed it. They filmed him walking on like a treadmill with like right. a moving background behind him, and it just creates this like dreamlike sheen to the whole thing, like you're sort of floating mm-hmm. through the okay. scene. And it's right. that's it's like a super cool. I I really like it. I've gained a real appreciation for it recently. Okay. All right. I will check it out. It's on the list. Yeah. Do do do. do. Um. Tom Cruise argument convinced me alone. That alone. Yeah. It's good. Good work there. Yeah. Um. Okay. But we so. should probably get into it because we are over twenty minutes into this podcast. We've only we are, talked about we? films. <laughs> We've caught up about that. There's a twenty twenty four goals. Another twenty twenty four goal is fight twice. I want to get two fights in minimum. More if I can, but if I can get two, I'll be really happy. Because um, last year was so dedicated to this sport and getting myself to that first fight. And, you know, there was pullouts, there was close calls, and it just, it did finally happen at the end of the year, of course, but it was only the one. Um, yeah. I want to get one in soon. We're looking at March. We're looking at the date around March 16th, um, tentatively. Um, I don't have an opponent or anything yet, but that's the, the date and the events, you know, looking at the calendar of the events that are coming up, um, and the fight cards available to me, that's the one I'm eyeing and gonna probably nominate for. So that's what I'm training back training for, um, mm-hmm. back losing a bit of that Christmas way. Now I'm doing a bit of a pre-camp camp cause I'm not in camp yet, but I've started like a pre-camp camp. Just to mm-hmm. um, just to get into shape, get the holiday rust off, get back yeah. into shape, get a little bit of weight off, just to make it get a bit of weight off now to make camp even easier. Where I'm not having to focus on weight as much. Like the weight cut will do the rest. I just want to be yeah. able to level up and be at my healthiest, where I can still eat during camp. Not like eat shit, but eat more volume. I'm not trying to lose weight, if that makes sense, during training camp, because that sort yeah, of sucks yeah. to do that um, as well, because then you're like in a deficit, and I don't want to necessarily be in a deficit. I want to just sort of maintain, fuel the body that need as it needs to be fueled. I'll naturally lose an extra kilo or two district camp. That's fine, and that's what I'm aiming for, and then go into the weight cut week. At a, I, have a, I know the weight I want to be, and then it'll be super easy. Probably won't have to do any sweating. I'll just do a water load, and that'll take mm. it all off. So, um that's how we like it. Um, pumped, pumped. Um, excited yeah, I can't to fucking get wait back now. into it. I've got a. Um, this should be streamed. Should be available to stream. Usually yes. is. Um, so I think it costs money. So if you just want to wait till I upload it, that's fine. But Gaz, I expect you to pay for it. I will. Um, yeah, yeah. And I'll we'll, advertise we'll get, it, and we'll get the friends. It'll over. be a thing. It'll be a thing, and hopefully it goes well. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. Um, so yeah, super exciting. Um, keen to get into that. Um, I feel like we can recap twenty twenty three maybe at the end to highlight it. Twenty twenty. Let's keep talking about twenty twenty four while we're on the okay. subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what is your boldest prediction for twenty twenty four? Give me your oh, boldest you're prediction. Not it can be like who, it. a champ. It can be a champion, or it can be a fight, or it can be. 
if you can somehow predict some sort of story or drama, I don't know. But what's your okay. boldest claim in 2024? Boldest prediction. Mm. That's a tough. That's a tough one. That's a tough one because I feel like I the one that I would consider bold isn't one that is quite a popular take at the moment. Be a man. Be a man. Fucking say it. You okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. You disrespectful um, fuck. I, I think. I think Ilya Tapuria mm-hmm. is going mm-hmm. to beat Alexander Volkanovsky. <sighs> That's my that's my, and I think he will finish the year as champion. I think Volk will get a rematch. Obviously, you can't not give Volk the rematch because I was gonna say I was gonna say that Max Holloway will finish the year as champion. I don't think that because I think that Volkanovski will get a rematch and that'll be the two the two featherweight title fights for the year. And I think he will lose both. I don't think he'll. I think he'll look good. I think he will look good, and I think Ilya will just have. I think Volkanovski's hit 35. He's going to start to slow because that's the death number. I can't explain it. I'm not going to try and like science it. And people are totally going to be like, oh, well, Volkanovski started MMA later, so his problem actually isn't up yet. Uh, you're right. You're right. You're not wrong. But 35 is the death number. For some fucking reason, lower weight classes can't do it. 35 is when you fall off a fucking athletic hill. I don't think Volkanovski's going to look like he fell off an athletic hill. And if it was anyone but Tapuria, I would be picking Volkanovski. But the fact that it's Tapuria, the fact that it's someone who would already be tricky for him, but I think Volkanovski would be faster than, would be able to move around, would be able to just catch at the right moments. I think he's going to have lost a little bit, 10% maybe, of what makes him great. And I think it will be enough for Tapuria to take over with maybe like a 48-47. Or if he gets lucky, he can clip Volk and catch him. That's my take, I think. I don't like it. And it is it is cope. It is cope. But... Do you know what I think? You think the same thing, I think. You're not going to say it. because you're... I think. <laughs> yeah. no, no. Do you want to know what I think? Yeah, go go for it. I personally think you're a fucking idiot. (laughs) That's what I think, personally. If you would ask me what I think about just anything, really, but also specifically this, I think you're a fucking idiot. I don't think you know what you're talking about. I don't think you're qualified to talk about anything anymore, to be totally frank with you. And when it comes to Ilya Taporia, when it comes to that Spanish... God of a man. Don't get it twisted. If in doubt, go hot. I say it all the time. He's the hottest man in MMA. There's not a doubt about it. I mm. I love Ilya Taporia. I mm. think he's a fucking stud. Yeah. He is hot as fuck. When in doubt, go hot. It's the hot era. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> but here's the thing, Gaz. Here's the thing you forget. Because you're flying too fucking close to the sun right now with this nonsense. Hmm. is I've always said, have I not always said if in doubt go hot? I've always said it. Yeah. Nothing here in this scenario at USC 299 is in doubt. So I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Or 298, I should say. Uh, uh, there's nothing in doubt. What's in, hmm. There's nothing in doubt. There is one consistent truth, and it's Alexander, the great Volkanovsky's the GOAT. He is. I would agree with you. He beat Islam Mahachev twice once he (laughs) broke Islam's foot with his head. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, he is the undisputed lightweight champion, he's the undisputed featherweight champion, Alexander Volkanovsky. This is easy work. (sighs) This is easy work. Dude, if if this was last year, I'd be so fucking with you. I think you're afraid. I, I, I am afraid. I, think you're afraid. I am afraid. I think you're afraid, and 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 it's okay, my sweet summer child. It's fine, um, but <laughs> if and doubt go hot, yes, but there is no doubt. So, I think you're a fucking idiot. See, right. The issue. The issue with talking to you about Volkanovski is that you're very convincing, <laughs> and you always, you always make me believe for a little bit, and then I, 
I go back to it. I think normally when they're walking out, I'm like, no, nope, original feeling has come back. I don't, <sighs> have, I don't have a doubt. And this, in my mind. this actually ties into something I want to start doing this year. What? I want to keep a track of our picks. Oh, for main main events. I I mean main I'd be picks? happy to do pay per views. Okay. Pay per view main cards. You know, this fights. is your job then. You are signing up for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do this. I'll do this. You, That's you, fine. you have to do this. Your job is to keep score, and then at the end of the year, we score it. And it's just one point to one point, like each pick. Yeah, oh yeah. Like you yeah, get yeah, it yeah. right, and then it's just the total tally. Yeah, one hundred percent of picks. Um, so there's no like value, higher value for main events or something like that. Yeah. It is just straight and, up fight picks. Yeah, and we can pick which fights we're fucking doing. I'm not. To, I'm not like hedging a pick on Magni versus whoever the fuck Magni's fighting in two yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Like, I don't know who that is. I don't have a pick. Okay. I can talk yeah. about it a little bit. I can be like, oh, Neil Magni sure. does this, but I'm not. I'm not hedging a bet on that. Whereas, sure. Drake is doing But if I was Sean to Strickland. hedge a bet on it, but if I was to hedge a bet on it, surely I get a point. Oh, well, if you, yeah, I mean, or if you were to hedge a bet on it, be, then I would, I would be, have... I would be locked in. Okay, that's what you're saying. Okay, yep, deal. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's yeah, do sound. It. We're not going to know everything. We're not going to know. No, more, of course, of course, it'll just be fine. It'll even out. I feel like it'll even out for like who yeah. you know and I know. Yeah. Um, and also it's fifty-fifty. Let's be real, so. Yeah, exactly. I think it'll just be funny. I don't think it'll yeah. it'll prove who's there in any way a better analyst. The I expert? think the, the best the analyst expert? I know gets mm. shit wrong all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, my boldest prediction. Yeah. Is my boldest prediction is that. Oh. My boldest prediction is that by the end of 2024, Islam Mahachev will have lost the lightweight title. Oh, that's an interesting one. I don't agree with you. Yeah. Why? That's, I don't, just, we'll leave it there. That It's a bold <laughs> okay. prediction. You haven't I just thought think, that far. <laughs> no, I have thought. I have thought. I have thought. He's got Charles Oliveira yeah. or Armin, yeah. which just got announced, which is just he a beat fantastic Armin. fight. Then we've got um, Justin Gaethje. Mm-hmm. And then we've also got the this Dustin Poirier and Benoit Saint-Denis fight. I look at yeah. all five of those guys and I say, if Islam has to fight two of them, I'm confident he has a good chance to lose at least one of to one of those guys. And if you okay. make him fight two of them, I I just reckon there's a good to fair shot. He 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 loses the title. Uh, let me say this: Islam Mahachev loses the title in 2024. He could he win he it back it. and get a rematch? Yeah. Mate, I just say I I wouldn't put it past him to regain it. No. But I just want to say that he will lose the title in 2024. He will lose okay. the title. That's okay. my bold prediction. But then again, That's if he loses one. the title and he's not fighting till the mid year, he probably won't. F- like he'll be like too mentally fucked because they're just we gutted dogs over there. Um. So, <laughs> do do you want to potentially? You and you, you didn't have any reaction to me calling a whole group of people we gutted dogs. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't actually. I didn't catch that. What? What? Who was it? Oh, okay, Islam. I was oh, like, okay. He'll, he'll have he'll have the rest of the year off if he lost even in mid year because it's not like he's gonna come back oh, three yeah. months after a loss. He'll like have a fucking cry. Oh he's yeah, a weak yeah. dog. Like, yeah, I mean, there. and that, that's that. that's not a that's not a country racing. That's a, his <laughs> gym thing versus. Yeah. As in my boys over here at City K- CKB. You know, and freestyle. That's it's a team versus team thing here, and I'm on a team. It's, it's definitely like the Dagestani way of approaching MMA. It's like minimal yeah. risk. Be a weak kind of dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not one that I personally <laughs> yeah, yeah. like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be a weak kind of dog. You can say it. <laughs> yeah, you can say it. Um, no, I, I do agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, that's that's the bold prediction. What's the fight you're most excited to see? 
is it one does it have to be one that's announced because i've got one that's announced it doesn't have to be announced it can be one that will you know has a good to fair chance of happening you know what i mean like you look and you're like well this will probably all could happen this year that would get me most excited You're going to hate mine. I mean, I love... I do love Volkanovski to Puria. I think that's very It's a fun. great fight. That's a, that's yeah. my favourite fight that's been announced. Yeah. I I really... I also really like, just as a fan, I love Benoit Sandini versus Dustin Poirier. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. It's... it's All that I, shit you I, talked about, I, Dustin. If you're not going to fight contenders, get out of the way. Uh, let's yeah. fight the biggest killer. Well, he's fighting them. Fair enough, yeah. Dustin. Fair yeah. fucks. Yeah. But if he well, was going to fight defenders, he should have got the fuck out of the way. But he has he has chosen a defender who probably... Uh, sorry, a contender who probably won't grapple him that much now. So... Yeah. That's I, okay. Do you know what's scary? And I, you know how much I love Dustin. He's my favourite lightweight. Yeah. Um, he didn't let Volks up. I don't really count Volks up. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Volks champ, so it doesn't... You know what I mean? Like, I'm talking yeah. about contenders here. Um, I... I think Benoit's going to beat Dustin. I've seen a lot of people saying this, and I have to go and rewatch some Benoit because I have a feeling that Dustin just doesn't. I mean, fucking, I'd hope so. I'd hope so. But also, I'd sort of love to see when you. Everyone was talking about new blood in the lightweight division, this new era of lightweights, like the Armands and stuff. I think they're all just sort of shit. Their personalities yes. are shit. Their fight styles are shit. And everyone revving them up. I'm like, they can all get fucked. Justin, Connor, Ch- I, I count Chandler because he's been around a long time, even though it's not always been the UFC. Um, mm. But he's been in the lightweight world for a long time. Um, from even, I'll count like Islam, certainly Charles in there. Like that, that class of lightweights, they're the fucking shit. They were the shit. Mm. They were like, oh, this is the best division. This puts on the best fights, the most entertaining fights. Yeah. Um, and this new era came in. They fucking suck. Do you know who doesn't suck? Benoit Sandin. Benoit Sandin. He's the only one I'm like, yeah, give me. If you want to talk about fresh blood that I'm excited about, he's the only one in that division. I'm like, let's fucking go. Let's yeah, fucking I go. like and Daniel I like Fazeev. With his not terrible to be fucking. Well, actually, but I I do like Fazeev a lot. Um, yeah, it's whatever. a shame that his knee has been separated from his body. He fucking ruined Brad Riddell so he can get fucked. <laughs> as far as yeah, concerned. he did do that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Great fights. Really, really good fights. Um, yeah. What's yours? What's your fight of the year? Um, okay. We can fuck this whole Michael Chandler nonsense out of here, to be honest with you, because oh, I'm bored. I know I'm what you're going to say now. I, I'm over it. Like, who gives a fuck? I don't care. I'm Michael also Chandler can fight someone else. Um, boring. Not excited about that fight at all anymore. Um, I feel like Chandler's just not on the level to be fighting Connor. Mm-hmm. I just And it's also just not like it has no consequence. If Chandler wins, I'm like, well, I don't care. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, well, if Connor wins, I'm like, great, I guess, like, that you've won. That's awesome. Um, but also, it wouldn't mean that much, I don't think. I just don't think it matters, that Chandler fight. Um, I just want to see, for the love of Christ, I just want to see Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. Versus, versus Nathan, Nathan Diaz, Diaz. Diaz. Yeah. Yeah. I just, please please i've waited so long i've waited so long this is my kingdom hearts three guys <laughs> you know the first and second were in quite quick succession and then i've got to wait 13 years to get that third game yeah that's what conor mcgregor nate diaz is yeah i understand that i, I i'd like it because it it's good for both you know what i mean they're both they're, but they're both washed like they're yeah, both still great to watch. Nate, Nate was getting beaten by Tony Ferguson until he got a team then. Nah, Nate's fine. He he beat he beat Tony. He did. He beat Tony. He beat Tony versus Tony shot a sh- stupid takedown. 
like he was losing on the feet to Tony Ferguson. Dude, how crazy is isn't... that era of lightweights where the top four lightweights were like Khabib, Tony Ferguson, Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz has beaten half of those guys. Like that's crazy on his record. He beat yeah. Conor and Tony. You never would have thought that. You're like, Nate's not going to beat any of those guys. Well, he beat two of them and he never fought yeah. the third one. So, and the Conor one was a good win as well. Yeah, it was a good win. It was. But you just never would have, like, Khabib only beat Connor. Connor only beat Nate. Tony didn't beat any of them. But Nate beat two of them. Of the four of them, Nate has the most wins against that group. Yeah. It's a wild, yeah. it's a wild yeah. stat. Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, yeah. I just didn't expect that at the end of it all. Like, if you were to ask no. me back then when it was all happening and we thought Khabib Tony was going to happen and the Conor Nate shit was going off and the lightweight division was on fire, you're like, wow, mm. these guys will obviously all fight each other at some point. No. The world, the MMA gods hate us. Yeah, yeah please, the world just ended for two years. Please give us Conor Nate 3 and then both retire. I don't want to see either of them fight again. They don't need to fight anybody else. Like, that's the only storyline in their careers that still matters. And I, I get that you still... can do it any time and it will sell, but like, I feel like now's the last time that it'll be oh, yeah. not terrible where it'll still yeah, be like, yeah. Oh, this is actually a sick fight. Like you might tell me Gaz all the way leading up to it, how whatever they're both wash. And then you'll watch the fight and you'll come back oh, and be like, okay, that was sick. And I'll be it, like, yeah. I fucking told you it'll be sick. The build up will be sick. The fight will be sick. It'll be sick. I only, I think, I only care about people being washed when they're being given to young guys. If two, like, you know, give me a fucking like a Robbie Lawler, and versus another old man fight every any day. Yeah, I'll take it. And look what know? that gave us. It gave us glory. Yeah, yeah. It gave us Robbie Lawler glory. Um, which is what we all want. Uh, the only other fight I'm really interested in seeing Connor have, and it's one that I don't think he'll win, but he could. Yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing him fight Charles for the belt. Not that Charles has the belt, obviously. Um, yeah. I, I know what you're saying. I he, I mean, you've got if he beats if he beats even one lightweight contender, he's fighting his Oh son. yeah, he's fighting his one. He's fighting his son. It's Charles and then it's they him. can't they can't they can't have Khabib Connor. You no, know what I mean? They, they can't get that second fight. Dana's thing. dream. So they're like, what's the next best thing? The biggest celebrity yeah. of all time. What's the next best thing? Islam, Connor. And it just, please, please give it to me. Yeah. Uh, it would be, be so dying. different to the Khabib, Connor build up. It'd be so, yeah, so yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're such different characters. And Islam is so much more, or less, so much less emotional than Khabib is. Yeah. I don't think Islam will get that fired up. No, no, no. Comparable to Khabib. He's not going to jump fences or anything like that. Oh. At least you hope not. Yeah, and it's, it's, a, it's a weird style matchup as well because they're both southpaw counter-strikers. But Islam fucking sucks on the front foot unless he's taking you down. Yeah. So it's just a weird... In which I'd imagine he's just going to try to take him down. Oh, yeah. Be real. Yeah. <laughs> what would you do if you were Islam? Probably take him the fuck down. Yeah, of course. But I think that he's got to spend some time on the feet with Connor. Or Connor's just going to... Yeah. Imagine, my, imagine if my bold prediction not... is true, that Islam loses the title this year. But it's an even bolder Connor. prediction happens, which is Connor McGregor wins the lightweight title. Like, both of those things become true at the same time. Oh. Isn't God, that be fucking very cool. weird? It would, it would be... be super weird, and Connor would immediately... I don't even think he'd defend the title. But God, <laughs> Who needs cool. defences? It means nothing. Unless you're Volk. Um, but, <laughs> no, it would be funny as fuck. It would be funny. It wouldn't mean what it used to mean, but it will be funny. Yeah. Um, he should definitely retire if he won that, that belt. Oh, yeah. Just be like, get out. Get the fuck out of there. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, y- Yeah. It won't happen. There's no way he's going to win. Like, there's just no, he's just not. No. He's pre past his prime. He's done, he's done it all. He's, he was a champion. He was that level. But he's, you know what I mean? You don't stay there forever. No. You just don't. 
we all know it. That's fine. That's fine. If fighting just takes it out of you, you've only got so much like of a health bar and the health bar in fighting just doesn't recover fight to fight. You don't regain that. It just keeps going down until it's out. Hmm. Um, so yes, 2024, lots of exciting stuff. UFC 300 doesn't look like there's going to be, I don't know. They, they're saying things like UFC 300 sells itself. That's weird. I don't yeah, feel that, like I mean, that's concerning, that many, really, isn't it? I don't like, they're talking about Leon and Bilal Muhammad. And I love Leon Edwards, but with all due respect, terrible, boring fire. Don't care about it. Yeah, I, I don't want it on UFC 300. Ain't event I, 300? I would be, I'm like, are you fucking high? What are you talking I'd be, about? I'd be buzzing for it on another pay-per-view because it's my type of fight where I'm like... Yeah, it's fine. Like, 301, put it on that. Yeah, like yeah, right. Like, I like Leon enough to be like, ah, uh, even though he puts on some stinker sometimes, he's cool yeah. and he's he's kicky and he's super yeah. good in the clinch and he's like a strong grappler. And that's just yeah. cool. I just inherently find that cool, especially him coming from the same place I come from. And he'll do um, really well in a fight against Bilal. I think he beats him pretty yeah. decisively. And I think it'll be quite an entertaining fight. A lot more entertaining than that Colby fucking fight that was yeah. truly... Uh, if you don't like Leon, you, that that was a snooze fest. But if you yeah. like Leon, that was very satisfying. Very, oh, yeah. very satisfying. Enjoyed the... I personally enjoyed... Like, we haven't talked about the result of of 296 but i enjoyed the hell out of that personally just because yeah. i loved seeing leon just do whatever he wanted to that absolute fraud just fraud checked colby covington for yeah. the absolute nobody that he is in mma and I yeah it. heavy hand i was listening to the heavy hands podcast and they were talking about in the build-up to it the fact that this fight would define colby's legacy as either either the second best guy in the division to Kamaru Usman or as a guy who has no legacy in the division who's done nothing but have a fun fight with Kamaru Usman and yes. dodge dodge contenders and fight people yeah. who he knew he would beat because they're washed yeah. and they I mean that that performance has absolutely put him in that second category as a guy who doesn't have legacy who doesn't like yeah. what does he have left now he doesn't have any friends in the sport He's not going to get a fucking analyst role. He's not going to get like a desk job at the fucking UFC anywhere. That's like, true. N- no one, no one's going to want like Trump doesn't. Trump fucking left before Colby finished his speech. Like he's got yeah. no. Trump, Trump like is not going to have him on the campaign trail doing like, look, I have yeah. masculine MMA fighter because the masculine MMA fighter fucking stood there and didn't throw hands for Big five bitch. rounds. Big bitch. Like he has nothing. We left got a dog. Now. Yeah, Colby. The biggest nerd of virgin all time, mm-hmm. which is the ironic part Nothing wrong with of it all. Nothing wrong with it, but for someone that calls everyone else nerds of virgins, he's the biggest one all time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. he's only the only seen around women he's paid to be there, and he's a big dork for Trump and loses all his fights. Like, he's a fucking definitely virgin. Nothing wrong with it. It's just what he is. <laughs> And a nerd, Aww. and a super nerd, Republican nerd, like a political nerd. And then <laughs> the things he said to Leon, like, yeah, he can get fucked. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. can just absolutely get fucked, fuck that dude. Um, So. And that was after, was that after we recorded our podcast? That he was saying all that yeah. shit as well? Yeah. Uh, and I was talking a lot of shit yeah, about Colby. Was... And then I was like, well, I was justified in we love yeah. to see him lose. That was great. Legacy done. Throw him in the bin. Don't need to ever see him again. Um, they can cut him now. They can just cut him. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, they won't. They'll give. They'll keep I dragging him. I wouldn't want to see an Ian Gary. Give him to Ian. Oh, Ian Gary wants Please. it. Please, Ian Gary said after Jeff Miller going to be coming to. I know, and I'm super. I would down. love it. I I love it absolutely. Super down because Ian Gary. I will. I think Ian Gary beats the fucking shit out of him, and it shoots. Yeah ian gary to the to the stars which i think is where he belongs i know a lot of people don't like ian gary but i'm a i'm a big fan of ian gary i like yeah him. i like him um oh, he's not perfect and but no. yeah all this yeah all the i'm not even gonna get into this ridiculous shit that goes on the line with that stuff because i think the online community is so embarrassing and i think people like to judge um a lot when they don't know anything and assume a lot and it's just projection with yeah. from their own shit lives um, because they don't know what like a good relationship looks like 
Um, so they just only project what they've experienced onto others, which is just um, mm. loser behavior. Anyway, anyway, 2024, anything else you want to talk about or should we get into, because we only have 20 minutes left, should we get into 2023 awards? I'm going to throw a couple of categories at you. Yeah, fuck it. Let's go. Let's do a year in review episode. Let's, okay. let's leave the pay-per-view. 2023. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Sean Strickland, Drickus Duplessis. Like, when's that? In two weeks? One week? How, yeah, two when, weeks. When? I mean, this. I don't really want to talk about that. No. For several reasons. It's a bizarre, two bizarre characters. Sean Strickland, like, I see appeal in him, but I also think he's very misguided. A very misguided person. Yeah. Um, very broken, very damaged, obviously. I like I like I think he's a good person deep down. Like, I don't hate Sean Strickland by any stretch. Um I I no. just I don't know if he's He's a traumatized guy that doesn't know how to handle it and he should not be in the public spotlight. I don't think it's good for him. No. I don't think it's good for other people to hear about that aren't stable either. I don't think he's a good example. I just, I feel, I pity Sean Strickland. Um, great fighter and everything um, and I respect him, but I just, I pity him a little. Um, and Drickus is just a fucking cockhead. Fuck that guy as well. Yeah. Um, I don't like Drickus for obvious reasons. Um <laughs> And he can just get absolutely get fucked. So I'm rooting for Sean, but I think Drickus will win um, and absolutely fuck my day up. So I'm a whatever with, you with that. Yeah. yeah, I think because I think I would like Sean to win. I think he can win, but I think the yeah. Drickus probably just clips him with something big and boshes him. And then we're all just like punching our fucking selves in the face. Yeah, give myself a fucking uppercut after which, that. funnily enough, but is, I just expect wouldn't be out of place in a Drickus Duplessis fight. No, no, it wouldn't be out of place. It'd fit right in. And my thing is, I just, um, I don't know. MMA at the moment, I'm definitely not vibing with it as much as I have in past times. Like, I love the sport and I love doing the sport, but the watching of the UFC at the moment, I actually don't feel like it's at its best. I feel like we just finished an era of its best. Yeah, I would agree. But the second half of last year, I don't, I don't know, bro. 2023, I don't know, kind of sucked. And it's not that all the fights sucked. There were some amazing fights. Um, but just a lot of blah results and weird shit. It just, I don't know. I just wasn't vibing yeah. with it. Not vibing with the whole MMA community, like the online space, the being a part of like build-ups to fights, like the fights themselves, the fighters, results of fights i was just like i'm not loving this i'm just not loving it um I don't yeah know. i had Are moments you, i'm and now you're telling me the next pay-per-view i'm like i'm going i'm like i'm watching sort of trickling do, do trickers do plus i don't like either of these guys and trick is gonna win yeah. i'm just gonna be like oh this sport fucking sucks what the fuck is going on yeah i mean that is a particularly bad one i think because after that we have volkanovsky to volk will be good and we have yeah that's good and we have um o'malley vera the Amali Vera yeah. card is fucking stacked. I am pretty pumped it's for them so to good. inflate um, Sean O'Malley's um, pay per view popularity with all these other yeah. fights. Um, yeah, that's that's also taken a bit out of it. I think the fact that Sean's star power is like nowhere near what at least I thought it was. I didn't think he was like I knew there were guys that were bigger than him, but I thought he was a big star still. And the fact yeah, that me too. there's been a lot of evidence recently that he's actually not that. Yeah. Is a little I mean, bit to like, be fair, his KO know. got a lot of views and it's the follow up. I think this will do very good business. I think yeah, I think a wins. lot of people didn't think Sean was truly capable of winning that title, no, to be I honest. Well, I and I think that KO, they released it very purposefully for free right after the paper. Oh, yeah. As a video itself. And if you weren't around as I was for when Conor McGregor broke through, the things that blew him up was his internet um, viralness that happened after Chad Mendes, but even more so after that 13 second count of Jose Aldo. Those are the things that blow you up. It's the next, it's not that fight necessarily. That's the big fight. It's not the Chad Mendes fight. It's, it's the Jose Aldo fight. Oh, it's not the Jose Aldo fight. It's the next fight. It's the, f- it's fights after the, the build big results. And yeah. he just got the biggest result of his career. He got a viral KO of a world champion. He's now a superstar. He is a superstar now. Don't get yeah. it twisted. His next pay-per-view will do big business. And Cheeto Vera's a name. 
it'll do big business. This will do much bigger business than the Sterling fight. Much bigger. Ignoring the fact the undercard's absolutely stacked. Yeah. This, I think this fight does much bigger business. It'll do twice the numbers. It'll do twice the numbers. as the, uh, Yeah, Sterling I hope one. so. It'll be, I'm not saying it's going to do a million, but like... Mm. 800, 750,000. Like, it'll be solid. He's a he's a name. He's a star. It'll do Izzy numbers. Oh, that's big. It's bold. Izzy's not a million, million pay-per-view seller. No, you know no I, mean? I know. But he's solid. He's like... He's yeah. solid. 700, yeah. 800? Yeah, 800 is where I would pin him. Yeah. He's super solid. He's a big... One of the biggest stars. And I think Sean's on the way there. You know, it'll do 650, 700. Yeah. Thousand, I think, for the next one. I think it'll do good business. Especially leading into 300. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I I, um, I actually, I felt the same as you. I've been in a bit of a downturn the last month with MMA. But um, that I feel like Poirier six Saint-Denis, months. that Poirier Sandini fight has really fight. reinvigorated me a bit. It's a really good fight. Yeah, it's I agree. It's a really good fight. I agree. Yeah. Go on, hit me, with, a, hit me yeah. with the end of your awards. Okay, yeah, we've got 15 minutes. Let's do these awards. i got five. Give me your mm. breakout star of the year. Oh. So it doesn't have to be... It can be like a rookie that's burst onto the scene. It can be a young contender that's come up and blown up, it like, but that went from not much to a hell of a lot in, in 2023. Is that, are we talking star or are we talking fighter? Um... Let's go fighter. Let's go fighter. Okay. My instinct is, I mean, Sean Sean Strickland obviously stands out, but I would probably lean towards Ian Gary because the sunken arm fight was this year, wasn't it? I did not like Ian Gary at the start of this year. You didn't. I didn't. didn't I thought he was. I thought he was like a mid overrated welterweight who like hasn't. I didn't see him put anything together that was remotely impressive. And then he comes yeah. out and he he starts just on Kanan by using something that hurt him to then build off of. Yeah. Like the way he used that left hook that caught him and just built off it and built off it and like baited it and then caught Son Kanan with it was fucking brilliant. Yeah. And then he blasts D-Rod and is like, this is how I'm going to do D-Rod. And does yeah. it in like two minutes. Yeah. And then he takes Neil Magny, who hits his kids... To yeah, like a thirty twenty four, I think, just yeah. fucking brutalizes the guy. Yeah, like yeah, I really, I I fuck with that a lot. Yeah, I like it. I like that call. I'm gonna go with. I'm actually gonna go with Benoit Saint Denis. That's not a bad shout. It's not a bad I shout. Think that, I think. I mean, he's got a fight now with Dustin fucking Poirier, one of the biggest names in the sport. You want to talk about breakout? He's broken out. Sean Strickland's the obvious one. Um, yeah. But I I, I I, want to go with Benoit Saint-Denis. I think he's really stood out for me. Um, I think if Jack Della had... I thought Jack Della was the one year before, like 2022's breakout. He only had two fights last year. I think we'll be talking about Jack Della again um, at the end of this year. I think he'll be... Yeah. He'll be close uh, to fighting for that title end of the year. Yeah, I don't disagree. I think he's definitely getting up there. Give him a fight with like Wonder Boy. Give him a fight with like, I don't yeah. know. He's three fights away from like we're talking number one yeah. contender for the title. Yeah, uh, three at max. Yeah, I'd say four at max. Just with how I think there's a lot of contenders that they'll will get title shots. Uh, yeah, I mean you're probably right. Yeah, no. yeah. Um, and assuming um, Jack Dell stays healthy. Um, okay. Uh, give me your. I feel the, like this is a pretty easy one. Female fighter of the year. Um. Uh. uh for, for me, and it's okay. going to be different to you, actually. Is it okay? I thought it was an obvious one. Well, there's two. Well, there's two actually. There's two. Okay, go on. I okay, think one, but go on. I think Zhang Weili put on a fucking incredible performance. Um. Sure. And I, I became, I became someone that liked Zhang Weili fights to a Zhang Weili fan this year. With okay. what she did to Amanda Lemosh. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. I also think, actually, whilst Alexa Grasso did some cool stuff, I'm not that I'm not that big into her, to be honest. 
And I actually think Erin Blanchfield. Erin Blanchfield had a fucking incredible year. She did. But, bro, she beat Valentina Shevchenko twice. Yeah. The only other person to do that is Amanda Nunes. She got... Yeah, but also... And Amanda's never finished her. Alex Grasso submitted her. Yeah. But here's the thing, right, is that, like, it comes with the caveat. Absolutely. It comes with the caveat that... The Tyler Santos also basically beat Shevchenko the fight before. Not and as impressive though. It not starts as making. Impressive. I know it's not as impressive. I'm not saying that Tyler Santos is my fight of the year, but I think that Shevchenko may have lost something, and that's why we're seeing Grasso take but over. Only so- and I want to see her beat. I want to see her beat non Shevchenko opponents now. You know, and they're okay. going to do a trilogy, I'm sure, but. That I want you to reckon that not, yeah, I guess so they drew not Shevchenko she so that she yeah. can cement herself as like a champion <laughs> rather than a girl that's really good at beating Valentina Shevchenko who might have lost a step. Yeah, I, I say has, really to me, I, she drew with I, just think, I just think it has to be Alexa Grasso because Valentina Shevchenko is Valentina Shevchenko, and I don't, there's just no other, there's no two ways about it. That's my opinion. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Uh, it's so not who's your bad, one you're picking? It's, it's not Which one thing. are you picking? I'm going with um, Aaron Blanchfield. Okay. Super gay, but okay. Um... <laughs> That's okay. That's fine. The real ones. The streets know I'm right. The streets know. Okay. Um, <laughs> the streets Matt- love women's MMA. <laughs> the streets love it. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, what was your um, male? Who's your male fighter of the year? Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, it's hard not to just pick Volkanovski for being a fucking baller. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We love Vol. He He's isn't. had a good year. He's had a very successful year. He won all three of his fights. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's the obvious one. But not. It, let's make a rule because it, uh, our bars we would pick Volk every year. We're not allowed to pick Volk. Yeah, except that's we do. okay. So Volk wins. But who's the runner up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the official switching stances fight of the year is Volkanovski. Our individual picks are different. Yeah. Um, my, uh, my fight of the year, I I struggle to go elsewhere than. Okay, I'm gonna be annoying and do two again. Um, you can't pick fucking because two. I I want to give some fucking love to Francis and Garni. Y- okay, I agree with that. That's true. Yeah, yeah. A lot. I, I'm not mad at that. Well, let's give, definitely give some love to Francis Ngannou for sure. Because he's crashing out of the UFC. Fucking incredible. But we're talking. But he's. But he he boxed. I'm talking about in MMA. In, in You're talking the about MMA. Okay. Yeah. But yes, shout out to boxer of the year. I'm happy to give you. Let's go. Let's <laughs> boxer go. Boxer of the year. God, they're gonna love yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's definitely not um, Crawford or anything. Um, it's definitely no. Francis Ngannou. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and then my, my actual fight of the year, I, yeah. I probably think, is Alex Pereira. Wow. And it, it, it's a... between two. Okay. It's definitely that's between an two. One. That's an interesting one. I like it because, you know, you beat Jan Lovic, beat yeah. Yuri Bahaska as the UFC light heavyweight champion, but he also got knocked out by Izzy. So it's sort of like, yeah. Yeah. I think I think start, starting the year with a... What what was really like a career altering knockout? Yes, like he was. Like, nah, bro, he was I'm out, gonna go and then he and was out everyone. again. Yeah, which and yeah, but he was, was already incredible. planning on moving up. Like immediately following that that loss, Dana was like, yeah. he was he was always going to move up. He like he is moving up. That's yeah, that. so moves up, beats Jan Blachowicz, who is a tricky fight for him. Has like great kick defense. Has has grappling which is more than you can say for like 70 percent of the light heavyweight division um yeah and then comes out and beats in what i think is a um, is a closer fight than people like to remember um knocks out yuri pahaska to become the fucking light heavyweight champion like this yeah. time last year he was the middleweight champion yeah and i think that's an awesome it's, story it's, and to do it's that huge Post prime as well, like he's not a guy that's at his, at his best anymore. He is a guy that is doing this like in the twilight of his career at thirty seven. 
suffering like a a cold knockout at the start of the year i think is very cool and he's not going to be here for long mm. he's not going to be at the top yeah. for long someone's going to catch him whether it's jamal hill with the strikes who i think can do it um or whether it's someone like magomed Ankalaev who might remember to grapple and take him down he's not yeah. gonna Pereira is not going to be at the top for very long so i i want to give him the love whilst he's here yeah Yep, okay. that's perfectly fair. I'm going to go with Leon Edwards. Okay. I'm going to go with Leon go Edwards. On. He decisively beat Kamara Usman and Colby Covington this year. Yes. Those are... A couple of years ago, everyone was talking about two of the pound for pound guys. You know what I mean? All the shit everyone talks about those two, how good they are, the greatest welterweights yeah. ever. You know what I mean? And Leon decisively beat them both. And it was the second time beating in a row. Um, yeah. Kamar Usman. How do you not, you know what I mean? How are you not impressed by that? There's like, I don't disagree with you with, I think Pantoja is probably the next best, you know, pick after that. Beating yeah. Royval, beating Moreno. He's the champion, hasn't lost. Like when you lose in a year, I just find it hard to pick you. I get your argument. Uh, your Pereira is probably the only... You know, he's the exception, not the rule when it comes to picking yeah, that's fair. guys that's that fair. would lose in a year. I wouldn't pick him, but like, I'm not mad at you for picking Alec Pereira. It's hard not to with what he's done. But the losing thing is tough. So I feel like it had yeah. to be a guy that's dominated or, you know, just been unbelievable all year. And I feel like Leon Edwards, though he only had two fights, they were at tail into the year. So you forget he's fought twice this year. But they were two of the biggest names in the history of the division and he dominated both of them. In impressive fashion, and he looks like he's going to be very hard to stop. I really like Leon, and I, he's he's my pick for fighter of the year. That's fair enough. I, you I didn't would expect that, did you? You didn't expect. I didn't that, expect did you? that at all. I thought you were going to yeah. go Islam. Why he lost both his fights this year? <laughs> okay, yeah, we're, we're just not going to give just... him any praise ever. Why would I do that? He had a very close fight with Alex Volkanovski. If you want. If you want praise, go to another podcast because you're just not yeah, going to find it here. That's what I say to that. There's plenty of places on the internet. If you're an Islam fan, you can go. This just isn't the place. I'm not no. from the country. I'm not the guy. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it just is what it is. Yeah. So I can't. I can't do it. If that's what you want to know. If you want the truth, I can't do it. I can't do that's it. That's fair enough. And, I, 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 and I'm not going to. I'm not going to pretend I can. I'm not going to lie to the people. So, and I still pick. Uh, yeah, it's Leon. It's Leon. Yeah, that's that's a fair pick. I I would, in my and opinion, even that I second. Would... And and if you want me to get, if you want me to get real, real for a second, mm-hmm. huge asterisk next to that second fight. I'm just saying of Islam. There's just a huge fucking asterisk. Oh, I I completely agree. Yeah, I I mean, yeah, I didn't pick him. You can say Cobo you want, and it is, but it but there's an asterisk. Let's not pretend there's not. You're lying yeah, to yourself if there isn't. Nope. I it's true. It's, I don't think it's crazy. It's crazy, absolutely the truth. Yeah. Because you saw what happened with the full camp. Lost the fight. Lost it. Lost the fight. To 10 days notice on the beers depressed. Mm-hmm. Flew half Well, like, obviously. What the fuck are you talking about? Mean, in fact, meaningless. Should be stricken from the record. <laughs> meaningless. Okay, now it's meaningless. Should be stricken from the record. Doesn't matter. Um, anyway, it's Leon Edwards. Yeah. So. yeah, I mean, I would I would caveat the Leon Edwards stuff by saying that Usman and Colby both looked quite... I mean, Usman looked good in his Colby... Uh, in Usman his, was... In I was Leon fight. Us, Usman Colby was the, the, the goat welterweight undisputed champion before Leon's the one that did it to him. Yeah. So I, I don't think I you agree. can ask Leon. Definitely, I think Leon's definitely like top three. Yeah. I, think, I think I'd agree. I think I'd probably, for me, go Pereira, Pantoja, Leon. Yeah. Pantoja but, uh, was yeah. amazing as well. Like his fight with yeah. Brandon Moreno was insane. Yeah. Um, but when you pick guys I like, i.e. Brandon Moreno, it's tough for me to pick you when I'm going between Leon and you know what I mean. Like if it's out of the Fair two enough. of them, which it was out of the two of them. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. What was your fight of the year? Final one. I said five. Mm. The other one I think was the card of the year, which to me was Vol- Volk Yair. By the way, 
because that was yeah, like Robbie Lawler was on the prelims. Dan Hooker, Jalen Turner was on that card as well. Brenda Moreno, Pantoja was the co-main. What? What? Yes, it was UFC 290. Is that what that was? Uh, yes, it was. Uh yeah. Volk was beat yeah. Volk beat yeah. Yair. Marina yeah. Pantoja, which is one of, if not the fight of the year. Robert Whitaker yeah. Duplessis. Oh yeah, fuck that shit. Fuck <laughs> that shit. Um, we forget about that. That didn't happen. Um, that they failed to make weight or something. Um, Dan <laughs> Hooker, Dan Hooker, Jalen Turner, Bo Nickel opened the card, and then on the prelims we had Robbie fucking Lawler, bro. Yeah. That, I think that was my favorite card of the year. Yeah, I, I'm not going to argue with you there. I think it's my favorite. You know, I wasn't mad at um, 291 was also amazing with Dustin and Justin. It was Yana good. Yana Pereira, good. Derek Lewis got the flying knee KO, Bobby Green, Tony Ferguson was a bit sad. Kevin Holland, Kiesa. Yeah, that was a good card too. There was, there was... There was a lot of good cards now that I'm like looking back. Um, Tony Ferguson really does just ruin cards, doesn't he? Because he like yeah. he has he to go American. on the main card, and it always it's always a black mark on the card. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? And then I feel yeah, I, I think it has to be two ninety. Yeah, I think yeah. Looking looking at, I'm looking quickly scanning through the cards. I do. Yeah, I think it has to be two two ninety. I think the only, I mean, both of Volk's cards are pretty sick. Hey, mm. is Islam Volk one Yair Emmett, Jack Della, Randy Brown, Justin Tafa, and then there was the draw with Jimmy Crude at the start, and then that was a pretty good card too, pretty solid. Jack Della at his moment. Yeah, that was solid. Yeah, I'm gonna go two ninety. You'll see two ninety. Yeah, is the best card. Yeah, I'm with you. you. Um, and then fight of the year. What was your favorite fight of the year? I think we're going to have the same one. Uh, I think we probably will as well. Um, I'm t- I, uh, I've got to start being more decisive, man, because I, I'm, I was okay. going to be like, I've actually got two, um, yeah. but I'm not going to do just that. Gotta, you've got to pick one, mate. You've just got to yeah. jump and I'm gonna on go the side with, of the fence. I'm going to go with Volkanovski Islam one. Me too. Volkanovski, that thing, I think Volkanovski, it's the highest yeah, level MMA fight I've ever first. seen. Yes, Alexander Volkanovski, the undisputed lightweight champion, undisputed featherweight champion. Taking rising um, contender. Yeah, taking it's on rising contender, Islam Mahachev. Yeah, the first the first fight. Um, it was the highest level MMA fight I'd ever seen. Um, yeah. It still is. I just adore it. It was so cool. It. it was so much fun. The Alex's walkout in Australia to oh. Down Under. One of the my favorite moment of the whole year. If you want to talk about my favorite moment yeah. in MMA. It it maybe ever, it's yeah. that it's that moment. I loved it. Yeah, amazing. Okay, well, you've got to head off to work, so you've got to get going. Um, yeah, that's our twenty twenty three recap, twenty twenty four preview, and chat about movies. That's switching stances. That's Tyler and Gaz. That's what you're gonna get. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Be sure to rate us on whatever podcast services you're checking this out, or like us if you're watching on YouTube and subscribe to Switching Stances. And we will see you very soon for what will probably be our review of UFC 297 Duplessis versus Strickland where we'll be pissed so we'll see you then (laughs) thanks for watching and goodbye goodbye